Let us pray. Our Father, our Lord, we thank you for your grace and the privilege you've given to us. Thank you, O Lord God, for helping us to know your word and to know the truth. Thank you for helping us today because without you, uh, uh, we will not be able to, to do the right thing because you have helped us. You are the one revealing truth, what truth is for us. Lord, be exalted in the name of Jesus Christ. O Lord Amen. God Almighty, as we, we start um, this meeting, we pray that you will help us to uh, represent you well in the name of Jesus. Um, um, as we learn and discuss this, uh, to expose these heresies, for others to be warned and to take notes, they, they see the light of your word, understand your word, and learn how to to obey in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, people, for hearing and answering our prayers. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. Amen. 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 Yes. Hello, everyone. Amen. Good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you are listening to us. Um, hello, brethren. I believe we are fine. All right. So um, we started on this on this sub series a while ago about uh, uh, a video, making a comment on a video, and we um, making sure that our audience get this very, very rightly about uh, the truth. Now, the video that will be played soon is what, if you've listened, uh, listened to the previous, previous session of this, you would have seen it before. But we want to pick an important concept of this video and see to it if it is really the truth, right? So, uh, we see here this person, personality, again, we will say that he is not our, we don't have a personal attack against him. We do not have any personal attack against him. Whatever he's doing in his, in his private life, we may not even be aware of many of it, except if anyone here is his family member. So we are not after his personal life. What we are after is what the teacher of the pulpit, what they teach the public, and we are concerned about the truth. God is not a respecter of any person. I want to stick to this word while we look into this teaching. Since it is a public video, this is what people see. Okay, it's not that we take it from his personal archive. No, it is a public video. It's made known in public. So public error should be exposed publicly. And that is what we are doing. I pray that the Lord will help us in the name of Jesus Christ. So, uh, Baba, if you're ready, I would like to see the video. And then... I've never had anything. Tomorrow we make it 55 years I met Jesus. Thank you. I've never had one day they think no i've never had a day of rethink our publishing mandate turned 41 years on the 14th of february now hear what god said to me when i found you as a faithful vendor i made you an offer I was a vendor of against books on my shoulder in the cabin. Going from place to place, you need this book. This one blessed me so much. This one will bless you too. So when I found you as a faithful vendor, I made you an offer. Major things are, are how would I put it? They are majorly wrong when it comes to Christianity, it doesn't, it's not consistent with the God of the Bible, the teaching of the Bible. And you might say that, oh, that's, that's too direct. Yes, it is. Okay. We are not beating around the bush. It is, it doesn't align with it, but we'll just pick one of it today. And we will also look at this man, um, David Oyedeko, and his view about, uh, this principle, this, uh, uh, theological stand. Okay, and that is the view about Jesus Christ. Let, let me see if I can share my screen. I have okay. a few things there. Yes. Um, okay. Let me see. Um, 
Okay. I, I hope you can see my screen, please. Yes, sir. Yes, we can. Oh, good. Uh, okay, that's very good. Um, <clears throat> this material has uh, uh, much of it. Uh, I, I prepared them from uh, from a book uh, on the, on word of faith. One of the, the the book is one of the one of the one of the original books, so to speak, that uh, that took a look at the teachings of word of faith around 1985. Uh, the author of the book is uh, Marconel. It's uh, D.R. Marconel. The title of the book is Another Gospel. Is uh, the the book the book was actually printed from a, a master's degree dissertation. It was actually a, the, the, the the material that the person used for his master's degree, uh, which was a, which was his project, and it became it became one of the important books in the world. Uh, when it was published around 1986 or so or something like that. So for people who are familiar with the book or if you really want to get the book, the title of the book is Another Gospel by, by Daniel uh, McConnell. So there's a little extract. I've actually extracted about one or so pages, which I, which I want us to look at uh, on the teachings of Kenneth Higley on the blood of Christ. When we are talking of the teachings of Kenneth Hagin, we have to remember that just as, a, as a John said, I think last week or something like that, that is our coordinator, much of what you have in Kenneth Hagin's teachings were plagiarized, were actually stolen, basically, yes. from the writings of uh, V.W. Kenyon. And since we are looking at the teachings of Kenneth Hagin, and from there, looking at the teachings of um, of David Odepo, the teachings of uh, um, of Finokadeboye, the teachings of the various people, the teachings of uh, Kenneth Copeland, people who have come up to say that they that they, that they teach word of uh, it's important for us to actually get into what they teach about the blood of about the blood of Christ. I, I want to advise people that <clears throat> this particular discussion is so fundamental that if you if you don't if you don't get it or rather if you disagree with it you are not a Christian. Um actually I'm not the one that said that it's the Bible that said that I understand many people take offense when we actually what, I, what I'm saying, which is basically uh, me repeating what you have on the pages of the Bible, is that if you really want to look at the, the teachings, the, the core doctrine of Kenneth Hagin and, uh, and whoever follows the word of faith that he taught, the, the main area where the, the main area of error, the error is so great in this particular area of their belief that if you share, if, if you share what, what the, in, in, in this particular error, you, then you cannot, be, you cannot be called a Christian. It's so fundamental. So I, I will advise people to please pay attention to the detailed discussion on what can I hate the thought? Which, as, uh, as I said the other time, and uh, John tried to remind us about a week or two ago, virtually everything that Ken Hagen wrote down as his book, he, he plagiarized them from the writings of uh, E.W. Kenyon. What most people, what most people do not know was that E.W. Kenyon got his ideas right from the Okot. E.W. Kenyon 
actually got his idea from metaphysics, from what is called metaphysics. E. W. Kenyon got his idea by his attempt. According to him, physics, which he which he learned from the school where he was. Of the Bible, we they believe that you can have Christianity mixed up with metaphysics from various sources, sources that are not necessarily biblical. The the teaching, the beliefs of Kenneth Hagin on the issue of the blood of Christ is so fundamental that you you the moment you understand it, you have got no choice than to flee. People who confess affinity or fidelity to the teachings of Kenneth Hagin, and they believe what Kenneth Hagin taught on the blood of Christ, it's very sad to say that they are not Christian. So please, the uh, maybe 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 John can read the extract if he can read. One or two paragraphs that you have, starting from the top. Okay. Um, in the faith, in the faith theology, Christ's physical suffering and blood shed in death have no more power to atone and deliver than anyone else's, than anyone yeah. else's uh, blood. Uh, yes. According to that, that's, okay. Just hold it. Just hold it. Please let that one should people should allow that to sink in. That is a fundamental teaching of Kenneth Higgins. That is the fundamental teaching of word of faith. People should allow that to sink deep into them. In the faith theology, what they, what they call faith, what uh, the uh, McConnell. Anytime you see faith theology, what he is talking about is word of faith. In word of faith theology, the physical sufferings and blood of Christ that is shed in death, that they have it, it, it have no more power to atone and deliver than anyone else's blood. It's important that we should get that. That is actually the belief. Every other thing we follow from what you have on that two lines. And you have to ask yourself, if you think you are a Christian, if you believe in what you have on your screen, you are not a Christian. I, I don't like to play games because this is this is a juncture where we must not play games with the eternity of whoever God has brought to listen to us, whoever that person is. The teaching of Kenai Hagin the teaching of word of faith, and we are going to see the evidences as we go, go along, was that the blood of Christ that is shed in death, that it had no more power to atone or to deliver anybody from sin, condemnation, or judgment than the blood of any other person. That is, that is what you have on your screen. And of course, uh, you have, according to Kenyon, if Christ's physical death paid it, then every man could die for himself. I don't know whether you can see that as clearly as I'm seeing it here. Yes. If the physical death of Christ could pay for sin, then if the blood of, if, yes, if the blood, if, if the blood of Christ who pay for sin, then every man who died who has well paid for his own sin. That that is that is the teaching. That was the teaching of Kenyon. That was the teaching of Kenan Hagin. That is also the teaching of Copeland. That is the teaching of Oyedepo today. You have to get this one very, very clearly. This is part of their teaching. According to them, sin is a, sin is, the, is in the spiritual realm. 
the, all these quotations, they are, they are from them. His physical death was but a means to an end. That is the, the physical death of Christ was but a means to an end. The end in few was his spiritual death and suffering in hell. I, I don't know whether you can see that. Yes. This is this are part of what they teach. Christ died on the tree so that he might die spiritually. Because it was his it was his spiritual death that actually paid for sin. I'm taking my time removing this thing from your skin because I want the, I want what what you are seeing on your skin to sink in. That if the physical death of Christ paid for sin, then every man every man could die for himself. The implication of that is that there was nothing special about the blood of Christ. That is the implication. And of course, you, you, we all know that blood actually stands for life. Mm. That is a denier of the divinity of Christ. Please, I, I, it's important that we get that in very clearly. If you can pay for your sin, if anybody can pay for your sin, for your sin, then it is superfluous for Christ to come and pay for the sin of, the, of that person. If by if if you if if human beings can pay for their sin, either by their death, if paying for sin, if please get it very clear, what they are what they are saying is that if the if the issue is the physical death of Christ, and payment can actually be made for sin by dying physically, the implication is that there will be nobody in hell because because the sinner has died, the, the sinner. Has yeah, the, the sinner has, died, has paid for his sin by death. If we say that, if we if we say that the death, the, the death and the blood of Christ was what actually paid for our sin, then since all men die, then there's no need for for the savior. All men are Christians. We are all Christians. Yeah, all, all, all we are all Christ. All men die. All men die. No, all men pay for their sin by death. By by you passing through, by you passing through the gate of death, you have atoned for your sin. If if we say that Christ paid for the sin of man by the mere fact that he died physically, there is another thing. A lot of things that is there that is actually. I hope my I hope my my uh, you are hearing me. My audio is not breaking again. It's not breaking. Oh, good. The end in few was his spiritual death. Please get this one very clear. Please, I don't want to rush. As I said, look at where I, where I am. The end in few was Christ to die spiritually. Please let me let me repeat something very grave. Christ never died spiritually. Christ dying spiritually means that there was a time when there was no Trinity. Because a member of Trinity had died, had been cut off spiritually from God the Father and God the Holy Spirit. There is no part of the Bible where this phrase is taught. The idea of Christ dying spiritually, there is no part of the Bible where it is taught. What we have in the Bible was that when Christ was about to die, he, he prayed to the Father and said, Father, to you I submit my spirit. Christ dying spiritually mean that Christ was a sinner. Please, let's get it very clearly. And that is part of the teaching. People should please pay attention to what we are talking about. Christ dying spiritually is part of the wrong teaching that people had been teaching on 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, where people have been teaching that Christ actually became sin. 
In fact, he became sin the same way Adam became a sinner. He became sinner the same way Adam became a sinner. He became sinner in such a way that God, God the Father, God the Holy Spirit actually cut him off totally. That is not Christianity. That is not Christianity. The other thing I like to pay, to pay to, for people to pay attention to is this phrase that he, he, he suffered in hell. There is no such place in the Bible where that is taught, please. Christ never suffered in hell. One of the last words that we heard from the mouth of Christ when he was on the cross was when he was talking to the thief. Today, you will be with me in paradise. And paradise is not Can I, No. Can I hang in? Can I hang in? And Kenyon and the sources from where they came were teaching that Christ actually needed to go to hell to suffer for three days and three nights. It's that it was his suffering. Yeah. Yes, that it was his suffering in hell that is actually the payment for our sins. Not the cross. Not the cross. The blood shed on the cross. Please read again what you have on your screen. The reason why I'm shouting that word of faith is evil is because it is totally contrary to the elemental teaching of the Bible concerning the forgiveness of sin by the shedding of blood. What you have on your in your Bible is that without the shedding of the blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. Can I hear you say that? No, the issue is not about forgiveness of God, or of, it's not about uh, shedding of blood. The issue is about you having somebody to go and pay for your sin, for the imprisonment in hell, to go and suffer in hell. What, 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 we are, what I'm saying clearly is that there's no part of the Bible where you can find that, that Christ went to hell. These people at times, they think that Christ went to hell and he was beaten and beaten and beaten and beaten up for three days and three nights by the demons in hell. It was when God the Father saw the beating, that the sovereign was too much, that he now shouted to Satan and his demon that it was enough. When Christ said that it is finished on the cross, on the cross, can I, yes, can, yes, can I hear you said no, it wasn't finished. The teaching of word of faith is so much contrary to the teaching of the Bible that people should pay attention. Because if you miss what I'm saying, you are going to hell. If, if you think that statement is much too big for my mouth, I can draw you, I can draw people's attention to what you have in the book of John, chapter 8, verse 24. That is that is where I'm getting the authority from. If I if you hear me say that, if you don't understand what we are saying, and you go ahead, you go along with the teachings of Kenneth Hagin. Concerning the blood of Christ, you are actually at, or, or at putting yourself in the, on the risk of hell. I'm actually paraphrasing what the Lord Jesus Christ himself said in John chapter 8, verse 24. If you do not believe that I am, you die in your sin. Yes. That is what we have there. So this man thought that the physical death was but a means to an end. The end was not the salvation of man. The end was the spiritual death of Christ and his suffering in hell. That is what you have in the paragraph before you, and you have to take that. According to him, the primacy of spiritual death is advocated by most of the major faith teachers. The, 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 the faith teachers, all of them, they teach that the spiritual death of Christ is the major thing. And please, I made a video about a year or so ago on Mr. Agbele Akani distorting 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. So many 
people following him. They have taken offense at that video without understanding the basic doctrine of the Christian faith that Christ was never a sinner. He never became sin in the actual, in the actual fact. He became sin as an imposition. He carried the sin. He carried the sin of the world. Not that he became somebody who was now obnoxious to God the Father. The, the, the way Mr. Akani was teaching it was that Christ drank sin and therefore he became sin himself. That is a very terrible statement. It is a very terrible statement. And that statement, if you do not repent from it, you do not go to heaven. Christ became the sacrifice for sin. Sin was imposed on him. He was the one that carried the sin of the world, but he was the holy one of Israel. He was the holy one of God. He the that, yes, he's the holy one of God. People should get that one clearly. So let, let's let's read a, a little more. Please forgive me. If, if this thing is going to take in, in some time, but I believe it's worth it. I believe it's worth it. The primacy of spiritual death is advocated by most of the major faith teachers. For example, Fred Price asked, do you think that the punishment for our sin was to die on a cross? It was, only, it was not only Fred Price that asked that question. All of them had the same question. By asking that question, it consigns them to hell unless they repent. Yes. Do you think that the punishment for our sins was to die on the cross? If that were the case, the two thieves could have paid up your price. The, don't forget, the two thieves were sinners. Sinners. Yes. Mm. To say that a sinner can pay for sin. Even, even is, one of them said that um, they, they were here because of what they did wrongly. But Jesus Christ, he didn't do anything. He was holy. He was righteous. A righteous man who died. You see, yeah, you, you see, let me say something. People should understand this thing very clearly. The reason why you have the Christian faith is that no human being could be found who had never sinned. Hmm. Who, who could use his own blood to pay for the sin of any other person? Hmm. That is, that is the fundamental teaching of the Bible. That is what the grace of God is hung on. That is what every, the whole teaching in the Bible is hung, is hung on the fact that there is no one that is righteous. No, not a single one. There, 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 there has been no one who could, on, on his own self-recognizance, face God and say, me, I had never seen. And therefore, I'm going to enter heaven by virtue of my sinlessness. Not Abraham, not David, not Samuel, not Moses, not Joshua, not Isaiah, no human being. These people do not understand that basic that basic knowledge of the Christian faith, that is what these people are fighting against. That is why, that is, that is why somebody could, on his own, say that the two things could have paid the price. A criminal is now supposed to pay for another criminal. And these are criminals. These are these are capital offense criminals. These are criminals that 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 are to be killed. The wages of sin, the Bible says, is death. The death is not just physical death. The death is the main thing of that death is the spiritual is is actually death in hell. I don't want I don't want us to make the mistake of calling it spiritual death. No, what they call spiritual death is different from death in hell. The wages of sin is death. That dead is total separation from God, in actual fact. Yes, sir. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. 
No, the punishment was to go into hell itself and to serve time in hell, separated from God. That is, that was what Fred Price was, te was teaching. Satan and all the demons of hell thought that they had him bound, and they threw a net over Jesus, and they dragged him down to the very pit of hell itself to suffer a sentence. That was what Frederick Casey Price taught, in ever increasing faith, so-called so messenger. That is June, June 1980, page 7. Those are lies. Those are lies. There's nothing like that. Kenneth Copeland is even more direct in denying the atoning efficacy of Christ's blood. And you see what Kenneth Copeland was, what Kenneth Copeland wrote. Jesus went into hell to free mankind from the penalty of Adam's high treason. When his blood poured out, did not atone. I don't know whether anybody is seeing this, this place. Wow. <laughs> this is big. This is big. The blood did not do it. Yes. So it has to go and pass it time physically. Yes. I don't know whether you are seeing that place. Mm. Yeah. Whether you are seeing the belief of Kenneth Copeland. And he has never renounced. He has never renounced this belief. When his blood poured out, did not atone. The blood of Christ did not atone. It couldn't pay for sin. That is the meaning of that language. It, the blood of Christ was not enough to pay for, for sin. When his blood poured out, did not atone. Jesus spent three horrible days and nights in the bowels of this earth, getting back for you and me. Our rise with God. Personal letter from Kenneth Copeland for the what? Texas, March 12th, 1979. Um, sir, sir. Yes, please go ahead. Sir. Uh, I want to, I'm before hearing... we leave this part, before we leave this part, I want, I would like to quote a Bible verse that uh, Copeland is trying to counter, that is trying to say that is wrong. Okay? Okay. This person is please go ahead. His Bible is giving us his own version of the Bible because my own Bible says in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 13, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 13, that but now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off, that is separated from God in a sense, okay, being brought near by the blood of Christ. So it is the blood of Jesus Christ that brings us to God, not spending Thank one you. prison term in hell. I, I appreciate one. that. Hebrew, Hebrew chapter. No, just hold it. Just hold it. Just hold it. We are coming there. Okay. We are coming there. That is very well noted. It was uh, now see the continuation of uh, which is from Kenyon. It was this was suffering here that paid man's penalty and made him an heir of eternal life. Please, I want you to look up, see what I'm seeing. I'm having here. Look, look up so that you read it very, very well. It's important you should read it very, very well. It was Jesus suffering here that paid man's eternal, that paid man's penalty and, and made him an heir of eternal life. As, as Kenyon so, so succinctly put it, he went to hell in order to take us to heaven. Kenyon, identification on page eight. Now, this is the lady that Kenyon, this is the lady among whom Kenyon learned some of his uh, teachings, Mary Baker Eddy. Mm. Yes. It is not surprising that the metaphysical cults also deny that Jesus' physical death atones for sin. The, 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 the New Age people, the actual New Age people, the people in New Age, the people in the Hinduism, the main area, the main area of disagreement between me and a Muslim is about the atonement of the blood of Christ. The main area of disagreement between me and a Hindu person is the efficacy of the blood of Christ. The main area of disagreement between me here and the shaman in my village is the blood of Christ, is the, is the efficacy of the blood of Christ. My hope, 
my hope for, for tomorrow, for today and for tomorrow, for eternity, is actually hung on the blood of Christ. Yes. The, the shaman in my village disputes that. The Muslim disputes that. The Hindus disagrees with that. If, if, if I call you an unbeliever, that is the play, that is the thing that you disagree with, even though you sleep in the church. Yes. Even if you sleep in the church, even if they bury your, your grandfather in the cathedral, and you you and you you believe that the blood of Christ is not your passport to God. If you believe that if the blood of Christ is not your passport to God, you and I we are not in the same faith. That is why I do. That is why if I call myself a Christian, I do not call in a Christian. It is the blood of the blood of Christ is the dividing line. Is the barrier? Yes. The blood of Christ is actually the defense that divides David Oedipo and myself. That is why I cannot be in the same place and say we are worshiping the same God with a Muslim. If a Muslim is going to be truthful to you, he will tell you he does not believe in the blood of Christ. Yes. If a shaman is going to be truthful to you, that is, best, that is the thing he's going to tell you. That he does not believe that the blood of Christ is enough to pay for his sin. That is even if he has said that it's a sin at all. Mm. And that's okay? Big. Yeah. So, Mary Baker said say that the material blood of Jesus was no more efficacious to cleanse from sin when it was shed upon the accursed tree than when it was flowing his vein. Um, I think uh, this, this is this, these are the Christian science people. That's the belief of the Christian science. The Christian science people are the precursor to the people that you call word of faith today. Christian science are the precursor. Because what you people call word of faith today was taught by Mrs. Mary, Mary Baker Eddy around 1890, around 1880, 1870. She was the one that formulated all of these things that Kenyon actually copied into his books. And we, we said that the books were actually stolen by Mr. Kenna Hagen. She referred to the idea that God's wrath must be propitiated by physical sacrifice as a heathen conception. I, I hope you can see my listening. Yes. Yes, you can. Yeah. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. Mary Baker Eddy said that that was a heathen conception. The blood of the Lord Jesus Christ is son, cleansing us from all sin. This is Mary, Mary Baker Eddy said that was a heathen conception. And she was the founder of what is called Christian science. Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. Kenyon's commitment to such metaphysical concepts made it impossible for him. I'm quoting, uh, I'm quoting, I'm quoting McConnell. Kenyon's commitment to such metaphysical concepts made it impossible for him to believe that Christ's physical sufferings on the cross could be sufficient to win man's redemption without some supposedly more significant spiritual suffering in the spiritual realm. This spiritualization of Jesus' death, whether implicit, as in, as in the word of faith theology, or explicit, as in metaphysics, destroyed the very core of the gospel. Of the gospel. Yes, it destroys it. It is cultic, it is heretical. The idea, if if you if your faith is not if your faith is not in the efficacy of the blood of Christ then you are in another religion altogether that does not have anything to do with the bible no matter whatever you say about 
you're reading the Bible. Yes, uh, the, so this is uh, this is what I've been trying to say all this while. The, this is the con conclusive proof that William Kenyon and everyone else who follows him in word of faith are not Christians. Yeah, not Christians. This is the denial of the divinity of Christ. It is the repudiation of the blood of God that you have in Acts chapter 20, verse 28. Mm. So, yes, it is the repudiation because the blood... The blood of God must be shed because only God can pay for our sin. Mm. Only Jesus can save. Only Jesus. And the, God said that I am the Savior. Only God can save. The blood of God that you have in Acts chapter 20, verse 28, was actually the payment. Because God is God, God is the only person that is capable of paying for sin. The debt, the debt is so heavy. The debt that we hold divinity is so heavy that it is only divinity that can pay for it. Yes. We have to get that one very clearly. The Bible says that God the Father gave God the Son a special body. So that he might have blood, so that he might share that blood for as payment for the sin of man. There are a few places that uh, I think I want us to look at. Blood in the Old Testament. This Exodus chapter 12, verse 13. I think most of us should be familiar with it. Yes, sir. It's a fundamental part of the of our belief as Christian as Christians. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. These people say that the blood of Christ never had any power. In Leviticus chapter 11, 17, verse 11, God was a little more explicit. It is the blood that makes an atonement for the soul. Mm, yes. Leviticus chapter 17, verse 11. Can I hear you said, and can I Copeland, can I um, Kenyon, uh, they said that the blood of Christ did not atone. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 26, verse 28, Christ himself introduced his blood. For this is the, this is my blood of the new course covenant, which is, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. I hope I hope I hope it is clear on our, on our screen. Yes, very clear. Okay, uh, Mark fourteen twenty four repeats the same thing. This is my blood. It's his blood. It has to be his blood, which is shed for many. Um, Ephesians chapter one verse seven. I think maybe that's part of what uh, John was reading the other time. Yes. Sir. The blood, the blood of Christ is important for us that we take note of the, the frequency, the frequency of the blood of Christ in the New Testament, and it came from the Old Testament. Many passages in the Old Testament, apart from these two passages, many passages of the Old Testament actually foreshadow the blood of the Savior. Yes, sir. Yes. For, 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 yes. So in uh, in uh, Ephesians chapter one verse seven, in whom we have redemption through His blood. Through His blood. The yes, the re no, no, no. The redemption is through the blood of Christ. In Colossians chapter one verse thirteen, the Bible speaks who had delivered us from the power of darkness and had translated us into the kingdom of his dear son, in whom we have redemption through his blood. Again, redemption is through the blood of Christ. The Hebrews did say the same thing. But Christ being come and high priest of good things to come by a greater and more, more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands. That is his body. The greater and the more perfect tabernacle. 
not made with hands. That is to say, not of this building. Neither by the blood of goats and calves, nor by, but by his own blood. By his own blood. Yes. By his own blood, he entered in once into the, into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. Our eternal redemption was through his blood. Through his blood. Yes. Based on the blood. For if the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of an have sprinkling the unclean, sanctified to the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ? The blood of Christ. It is the blood of, blood of Christ. Who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, on your conscience from dead work to serve the living God. The blood is enough. It was, it was the blood of Christ. In, in the, Peter, for as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold, our redemption was not through silver and gold, not through any other thing, but with the precious blood of Christ. With the precious blood of Christ. Because that's a lamb without blemish and without spot. In the book of Revelation, that is what you have. Unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. This said. is the little, yes. The, 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 so it is the blood. It is the blood that is praised to high heavens in the Bible that is now denigrated by Kenneth Hagin and the his followers. Yes. How could it the be blood, the blood, the blood of God. Before I finish, before I close, let, let me go to that, um, to that uh, um, Acts chapter 20, verse 28. It's important that people say, why, why do we call it the blood of God? Are we not overreaching ourselves? He bought us with that blood. By 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 giving it such a such kind of title. Blood this is Acts chapter twenty, verse twenty-eight. Take it. Uh, therefore, uh, unto yourselves and to all the flocks over which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers to feed the church of God, the church of God, which he has purchased with his own blood. So the church of yes. God that God actually did purchase. God. Yes, sir. Yes. God actually did purchase a church with, with his, his own, own blood. blood. Yes. Who was the person that shed blood for man? The Bible calls that person God. God. As that God. blood, that blood that purchased us, Kenneth Hagin and his followers said he did not at all. I, I want to stop here. Wow. Wow. This this is big. Wow. Um, yes, sir. Thank you very much. Yeah. One of the things You're welcome. One of the things you you pointed to, uh, these people have this view that God, God saw Jesus Christ as a sinner, as if God rejected him totally as a sinner, so he had to go to hell on the behalf of human. And <laughs> based on what we just see here in the scriptures and the lives, it is not so. When Jesus Christ said that, uh, uh, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He's saying it in the sense that God allowed the suffering of the cross at that moment. Not that God rejected him, hated him because we all sin. So God hated him, they see him as a sinner because he, 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 he uh, he became the sin. So when God looks at Jesus Christ, he sees the sinner. No, it is not so. <laughs> Forsaken there 
it's not a word for a total something. Just like Jesus Christ will say that whoever does not um, hate his wife, his children, his house, and all that, taking up the cross to follow him, is not fit to be a disciple. The word hate here is not a total hatred. We are supposed to love husband, love your wife. Okay. That's what the Bible says. Yeah, so that let, let me... Okay, sir. Please, let me come in there. Let me come in, okay. please, if you don't mind. No uh, let me see. Yes, because you are, you are raising a very important, uh, a very important uh, uh, issue. I hope if, if uh, I have uh, reactivated my video, if uh, yes, if, it's clear. if you have the voice, oh, yes. Okay, fine. And I want to, I want us to read the. Uh, um, John chapter 10. I want us to read John chapter 10. Can, can you see? Are you seeing my screen, please? Yes. Yes, clearly. Okay. You are seeing my screen. Is uh, it's, uh, it's Brad Paul seeing my screen too? He said yes. But you, okay, good, good. Yes, I can see this. Yeah. Oh, okay, good, good. Let, let, let's read from verse, uh, verse 15. Verse as 15. the Father... Yeah, yes, verse 15. You can read it. Okay. As the Father knows me, even so know I the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. Go ahead. Okay. And other sheep I have which are not of this fold, then I also must bring. And they shall hear my voice, and they uh, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. Therefore does my father love me. My father loved me, because I lay down my life that I might take it again, not his. Let, let me stop you there. Let me stop hmm. you there. Hmm. Verse 17. My father loved therefore, me because I laid down my life. Therefore, that my father loved me because I laid down my life. Hmm. People, people, when people hear, uh, my God, my God, why has thou forsaken me? They do not know that in actual fact, Christ was doing his father's love, his father's duty. Mm, he said, therefore, that my father, therefore, that my father loved me even more because I laid down my life because yes. because I'm actually I'm going on the cross. Yes. Why had that forsaken me? It's a quotation from Psalm twenty-two. Yes, verse one. Yes. Yes. And in Psalm 22, there were there are many quotations. Christ was quoting that place in order to complete the quotations for the for the audience of the people who were there that day. Because many, many parts of Psalm 22 were being fulfilled right in their presence, and they did not know. And they did not know. Yes. Mm. So Christ was quoting that place. Ignorant people who do not who do not know anything about God, they said that that was the conclusive evidence that the Father had forsaken the Son. Whereas the Bible said that my Father doth love me because I lay down my life because 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 the love and the Bible says something which people are forgetting. Therefore. As he giving him a name that is higher than every other name, that in the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow yes. on earth and even in heaven. Therefore, God has given him a name, God the Father. To say that God the Father was very pleased with God the Son going on the tree in order to shed the precious blood, the sinless blood, to redeem man back. The Bible said that therefore God had given him a name that is above every other name. The apostle said that 
There is no other name given to man under heaven by which we must be saved. That is what the apostles wrote. And that is the truth. So people who do not know, my father, my father, ah, that forget, they do not know that in actual fact, what Christ was doing there, the Bible said that he was crucified. He was slain from the foundation of the, of the world. Christ, Christ did not stumble to the cross. Mm -hmm. it, was, it, wasn't that was, that, it was not an accident. There, there was not an accident out there. That was God's plan to bring man back to himself. The issue we are talking about is that is it that you accept the Christ presented on the pages of the book, on the pages of the Bible, or you are lost? Yes. 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 And because, because I'm saying that, and some people might think, this man is so iconoclastic. He's, he's so foolish, saying a lot of things that he does not know. Therefore, I am opening my Bible to John chapter 8, verse 24. People should look at it. I said, therefore, unto you, that... You shall die in your sins. For if you believe not that I am he, you no, don't shall read die it. Don't read it. Don't okay. read it. Okay. okay. For if you believe that I am. If you, you believe not that I am. If you believe not that I am. Yes. If you believe not that I am. That is am. what you have in the Bible. It was the English trying, thinking that if they put he, they will make it sound Better, not knowing that they are distorting it. Distorting it, yes, sir. There's no he. There's no he in the Greek. Yeah. You will die in your sin. Which is the same thing as saying that you are going to hell if you do not believe that I am. If you think, if you think because I'm walking on two feet, I'm just like the rest of you. If you don't accept me as the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world, if you don't, if you don't get it that I am special, I'm divine, even though I have flesh and blood at the same time, you are going to die on your sin. Let me let me rest a little. Okay. Uh, 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 let me just uh, say one thing because what you have been saying. So people, for anybody that can have brain and can think and can hear the word and can look into the Bible, we know that John, uh, Mark, Matthew, and Luke, all the roots, all the roots, or that Jesus is the Messiah, and that is God. In fact. I think uh, the, this popular verse, uh, John chapter 20, verses 30 and 31, which told us that everything that John wrote, he, he, he was the author. Everything, he said everything that was written, that so many things that Jesus did in the presence of his disciples. But these were written so that you may know that Jesus is the Christ. And by knowing that, believing in him, you might have eternal life. Mm -hmm. It wasn't talking. It wasn't talking to uh, uh, people who do not know scripture. It was talking to the Jews who understood the scripture that believing that Christ and God are one, that Jesus is the Christ, and that Christ, and Christ and God are one. So uh, we cannot belabor it, and we cannot say it too much because the truth of it, the whole thing. Is that it's John chapter 8, 34. If you do not believe, you will die. Of that's, that's, that's clear. And there's nothing else to be added. Thank you, sir. All right. Wow. This, this is big. Jesus is God. And Jesus is man as well. And um, he died 
for us. The suffering on the cross is what gives us a chance to life. It gave us life, eternal life. Not what happened in one hell. Jesus Christ, the death of Jesus on the cross is sufficient for the remission of our sin. And then um, obviously, Kenneth Hagin is, that, that is not his view. Then, can we say he's a Christian? Who gets it wrongly? Who misses it? The obvious answer is no, he's not a Christian. Because every true Christian believes what Christ has come to do and when Christ did it. Every true Christian should believe that. If Kenneth Hagin is not a Christian, if Mary Baker Eden is not a Christian, then is Oyedepo a Christian? He faithfully sold the book of this man for years. According to him, we just watched the video. He faithfully uh, sold this book that is contrary to the scripture, contrary to the word of God, and he says that his own God now rewarded him. And that means that God that rewarded him is not the God of the Bible. Is not my God. He is a no God. Because the creator of heaven and earth could not go against himself. He can remember what he said in his word. He can remember, he remembers the things he has said. He remembers the warning that whoever comes to give us another gospel, except the one that is given, that such a person should be accursed. He remembers all that. And these people, obviously, are, are, are going against the God of the Bible. So, I don't know. I don't know what else to say about this than to say that, well, these people are not Christian. Just like Baba said, they are not Christian. And that is very true. They are not Christian. So, why are you, if you are listening to us today, why are you following these people? Why are you following these people? Jesus Christ said that a blind does not lead the blind. Yes, both of them. You fall into a dish. You are following a blind man if this is what you are following. If this is the person you, you are following, you are following a blind man. And obviously, you need to see as well. You need your eyes to be opened. May the Lord help us in the name of Jesus. I don't know if there's anyone who would like to add something, one or two things to this. Yeah, I, I just want to say I really thank God for what God is doing through this platform. Um, you know, though I'm still very new here, uh, but I believe this is what is needed in the body of Christ, most especially in a nation like Nigeria. Uh, a lot of things is going wrong. Uh, people have been misled for so long. And from every analysis that has been done today, even from the previous teachings and videos I watch, you know, it's becoming clearer and clearer every day that the majority of the people we call pastors in Nigeria are not actually born again. They have not really encountered Christ. And it's becoming crystal clear, even based on the, based on the analysis and the, you know, of uh, the Fatuki today, and the you know the precedent and the antecedent of the teachers you know most of these people are teaching and modeling their ministries and their uh, you know and their and their Christian work after that they've not really encountered Christ and it's so sad at the same time you know it's very alarming considering. You know, the number of people who are trapped within these churches in Nigeria, uh, we cannot do enough, you know, to make sure that this message gets out there. Everything that needed to be done, you know, should be done. Uh, uh, you know, is, you know, listening to teachings like this, for me, is an encouragement. Because I know, I believe it's the same thing, you know, that uh, you even probably have experienced more than I've done because you've been on this thing for a very long period of time, calling out these people for what they are. No people will come against you. People will, people will deride you. People will say, face your own business. Why are you concerned with what other people are doing? 
But we should be concerned with this, what these, these people are doing. Because what they are doing is leading people into hell. We should be concerned. They should be called out for not just to Yedeku, is it Pastor Adeboye, is it Chris Oyakilome, is it, you know, uh, Paul Adefaras? Every name that they are called, is it Suleiman, is it Sema? These people are leading people to hell. It is serious. And we'll be, you know, whether we like it or not, it is our responsibility to carry the message across. And then one other request I'd like to make, I think the book that uh, uh, Dafatoki, you know, Obatoke, you know Obatoke. Sense, Obatoke. Sir. Obatoki. Obatoki. Obatoki, sorry. <laughs> you know, that you read from, you know, if we can, I don't know if it's available electronically or it's something that we can download online. Please let us know. You can. Uh, you know, because I I believe it's a good resource to have, you know, the, yeah. found, the very is. foundation and background to all these word of faith and all these heretical teachings. God bless you, sir. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Our Father and our God, we thank you and we exalt you. We give you praise, O Jehovah, Lord God, because you have been good unto us in so many ways, in so many fashion, in so many phases of life. You brought us, O Lord God, to this point, to really understand your truth, to have a clarity of what you call us to be. And for this, O Jehovah, we say be that glorified. We thank you for the mercy you have shown unto us today by bringing this word of truth unto us once again to come to that understanding that only christ and only christ alone matters it doesn't matter what anybody is saying what christ has declared what christ came for and what he had died for what he had shed his blood for that is the most important thing for us to hold on to because your word you say, when we know the truth, the truth will make us free. Today, O oh Lord God, once again, you reminded us of that truth. We pray our Lord and our God that you grant us the grace to walk in this truth and to speak this truth and to live this truth. We ask you, our Lord and our God, for as many as we receive this video, as we watch this teaching, that your spirit, O oh Lord God, we come upon them and bring conviction and, and draw their heart unto you and unto you alone. We use this opportunity to even pray for the church in Nigeria and for the body of Christ as a whole worldwide. We ask you, our Lord and our God, that you show mercy, that you help your church, that you pour out your grace afresh and your mercy and me, that you bring forth conviction for as many, O oh Lord God, are, are seeking you, that are trapped in these places of all these heretical teachings and false, false doctrines, that, O oh Lord God, that so that their heart can be turned unto you, you true and the living God. Thank you, O oh Lord God, for uh, that Obatuki who has brought this teaching and uh, our brother who has coordinated the whole thing. We give you praise and we honor you. For us, O oh Lord God, on this platform, we ask for the grace to continue in that which we are revealed unto us today, unto the very end, so that none of us will be found wanting in your kingdom. We give you praise and we honor you, our Lord and our God. In Jesus' glorious name we are prayed. Amen. Amen. Amen.